Hey guys, what's up? Murder of Birds here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Ruby News and information video based on information from the recently concluded New York Comic Con 2019 convention. So we are less than one month away from the premiere of Ruby Volume 7, which is scheduled to debut on November 2nd on the Rooster Teeth website for first members. And we even got a badass trailer to build up the hype and anticipation during the wait. And with all of the news and information currently centered on the next volume of Ruby, I had no idea that we'd be getting this kind of detail on the future of the series so soon. Well, it seems like Rooster Teeth is further along in their production of Ruby than anyone could have anticipated because, for the first time ever, production on two additional Ruby volumes has started before the current volume has even had a chance to come out. This information comes to us by way of Sci-Fi Wire, who also served as the live streaming hosts during New York Comic Con this past weekend. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description to anyone who'd like to read the full article themselves, but the headline reads, New York Comic Con 2019, Team Ruby premieres Volume 7, officially announces volumes 8 and 9. As Team Ruby makes their way to Atlas, the casting creators of the hit Rooster Teeth web series made their way to New York Comic Con for a panel and Q&A at the Hammerstein Ballroom, talking all about the upcoming volume 7. Casting creators being Kerry Shawcross, Miles Luna, Lindsay Jones, Kara Eberly, Aaron Zek, and Barbara Dunkelman. The article goes on to highlight a few of the announcements made during the panel, but I'll be sure to make and release a video separately compiling all of the news and information from both the interview and the panel. For those of you guys who haven't heard it. But following on the release of the Volume 7 trailer, the article goes on to say, Shawcross then made an announcement that shook the Hammerstein. We have Volume 8 and 9 officially greenlit. We have the budget to start them right now, he said. I literally started writing the script for Volume 8 this morning. So right off the bat, this is massive news for a few reasons. First and foremost, this is the furthest along that Miles and Carrie have ever been to writing Ruby in advance. For the most part, writing for the next volume of Ruby usually takes place when the previous volume has come to a close, and the fact that they've greenlit for two additional volumes makes this even crazier. Um, you know, we, uh, we, we were able to spend a lot of time uh, this year um, really taking a lot of time to try and like bump up our writing schedule, which did mean like one week after Ruby 5 ended, we got started on Ruby 6, but because of that, um, we were able to do like, um, uh, give ourselves a little more time and, and went back and looked at stuff from last volume and previous volumes, like, hey, what are things that we thought went really well? What are things that we thought could have gone a lot better? And like, really try to focus on what we can do to make volume six as best as it can be. And I think one of the things that we're definitely doing is uh, we wanted to make sure that there was always this sense of constantly moving forward, which means new places, new people, new monsters, new things, almost every episode and not not just being in like one house for a long time. Um, so yeah, we really wanted this volume to have this like awesome journey feel. And um, not so much like in volume four, where we were like jumping between a bunch of different storylines, but to be with one group on this like crazy roller coaster across a continent, uh, I think it's gonna be really exciting. In fact, I think another major factor for the step up in production has been the recent addition of the two new writers to the Ruby team being Eddie Revis and Kiersey Burkhart. Eddie has been an in-house employee of Rooster Teeth for a few years now and has co-written shows for Rooster Teeth such as Red vs. Blue Season 10, Camp Camp, as well as Nomad of Nowhere, while Kiersey also has writing experience as an author of young adult books. And I think this is really great for revitalizing the creation of of the writing team, mainly because, you know, it's been Miles and Carrie for so long, you know, during the initial couple of volumes for Ruby, it was obviously Miles, Carrie, and Monty, and following Monty's passing after volume two, Miles and Carrie, they've put this entire show on their shoulders in terms of writing from volume three up until the end of volume six, so I, I think having Kiersey, Eddie, Miles, and Carrie to bounce ideas off of each other, to, to brainstorm, to kind of give everyone the same level of support, and to help alleviate the pressure so that way the show isn't on the shoulders of two people. I think that's very well needed and I think that's why they're able to get two volumes ahead before volume seven even has a chance to get out the door for production. I'm, I'm just excited to start getting the volume out there. We've been working on it for a while and I'm just, you know, I want people to yeah. see stuff. It's, yeah, no, it's wild, like, cause we're in that phase right now where like some of us are working on some other projects and things and then you go back and you realize, oh my gosh, those scripts that we wrote, uh, what feels like a lifetime ago, everybody's about to see that and like all the writers get really excited, like, oh my gosh, how are they gonna react to this? Oh, I hope they like that. And uh, you know, it's, we, we just hope people are having fun. We had a lot of fun writing this volume. It was, it's a, it was a hard volume, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I don't think we could have done it if it was just the two of us in the time that we had to do it. Um, so big shout out to uh, Eddie and Kiersey, who, if you haven't heard, joined the writers team uh, for Volume 7. They've been amazing to work with. Um, 
they gave you Thirsty Mom. So, I mean, right there. Uh. You know, bam, they earned it. But um, it's super cool. I'm Honestly, I'm really excited to watch them because this is going to be the first time where, like, they got to write on something this big and they're going to see, you know, their, their work up on the screen. And I think they, yeah. they deserve all the happiness in the world because they've all, just been absolutely wonderful. We're all jaded wonderful. and tired and shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're just like, Meh, another season. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they're bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and uh, I'm, so, cool. I'm so excited. It's, it it's, gives me energy. It reminds me of, because now, you know, there's so much awesome fan art and stuff out there. And, you know, you see it now and it makes you really happy. But they are, like, in our Slack group, like, Guys, did you see? And we're like, yes, it's amazing. So the fact that we have a more robust team with four people putting their heads together, applying and adding a bunch of new things to the table is great. And I can't wait to see what Eddie and Kiersey do. But getting more information on the two volumes, the article continues. Luna also gave a bit of hint as to what we can expect. Volume seven and eight are going to be more connected with a focus on improving the balance of character storylines. So really quick, I'm actually working on a video outlining all of my predictions and expectations for volume seven. And hearing Miles say that right now has me very excited because because that was one of the things that I was really hoping would happen. You know, there have been so many interconnected plot lines since the show has started that have all pointed to Atlas for explanations. The Schnee Dust Company, Faunus Discrimination and Racism, The Relic of Creation, Penny's Creation, Her Father, The Winter Maiden, and so much more. So, you know, one of the biggest flops of the show, in my opinion, has not only been the predictable setup for these volumes, but also that we went to a new kingdom for the first time, the Kingdom of Mistral in volume five, but we spent all of our time in a house and we were in and out of there in a single volume. And following volume three, there has been a trend of a traveling volume, then a kingdom volume, and then a traveling volume. And now we're at the kingdom volume going into volume seven, but I'm happy to hear that volume seven and eight will give us the time and balance to flesh out a lot of these plot points and a lot of these character stories that Atlas has to tell. So overall, this is great news to know that we're getting volume seven next month. Volumes eight and nine are already greenlit for production in terms of writing. Miles and Carrie are gonna be hitting the floor running with Kiersey and Eddie to kind of flesh out even more of the story before production is even officially done, you know, for Ruby volume seven, which is great. And, you know, on a separate note, I know I've heard a lot of people mention like, oh, Ruby is done. Volume seven better be good or it's over. A lot of doom and gloom based on based on the recent setbacks and, and shortcomings and falters of the company of Rooster Teeth, you know, with the layoffs and the crunch time. But I, I think that this speaks volumes on the state of affairs for Ruby as an IP and Ruby as a product, mainly because first off, Miles and Carrie come out right with it and say, hey, we have the budget to start volume seven, eight, and nine, and we don't even have the return on investment for what volume seven will give us. So the fact that they're doing that definitely shows and says a lot about the fact that Ruby is incredibly successful, Ruby is incredibly profitable, and it will continue despite how people feel about volume seven, whether they liked it or they didn't like it. So that's also really great to kind of get that out of the way and kind of establish and, and make that statement of like, hey, we have the production, we have the capital to start these next volumes regardless of what people think on the outside of our internal state of affairs which is overall great but uh but yeah that's everything that's all the news and information that i have volume seven it's on his way volumes eight and nine are now in development i'd love to know what you guys think about that volume seven and eight will seemingly be interconnected so we'll be in atlas for a couple of volumes which is great to get through all of the plot points and moments and mentions that i that i talked about earlier but what do you guys think about this do you think this is a good plan for rooster teeth do you think the fact that they're working so much further ahead than where we are now with getting the show do you think that's a good thing for the show a bad thing for the show i'd love to know what you guys think overall also what expectations and thoughts do you have about volume seven eight or nine you know volume nine could also be the transition volume for when we go to vacuo if we end up wrapping up atlas in two volumes but overall that's all the news and information that i have very exciting overall so we're going to be most likely getting ruby volume 8 in 2020 and ruby volume 9 in 2021 so uh, the future is looking great for the series of course that makes me really happy as a fan and as an overall content creator um, but as always let me know what you guys think in the comments thank you so much for watching and i will see you all in the next video take care